Hello, today I'm going to show you how I made this Lego cake for my daughter's birthday. This is not a recipe, I just wanted to show you how I go about making celebration cakes and how fun and simple they can be. Maybe it will give you some ideas of how you could go about making your own. I always end up getting a bit stressed out if I have to spend a whole day in the kitchen making one cake, so I like to make cakes in stages. To begin, a month before the birthday I made my basic Victoria sponge cake recipe. At this point, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make a 3 or a 4 layer cake, so I made enough for 4 layers just in case. While the sponge cakes were baking, I made a simple buttercream frosting. I know a lot of people use fondant icing for decorating cakes, as with a lot of practice and skill, they can look very beautiful. However, my family and I don't really like the taste of fondant, so I don't use it very often. I find the flavour too strong, so it overpowers any other flavours in the cake. For me, the taste of the cake is just as, actually even more important as the look of the cake. Throughout making the buttercream, I tasted and added more icing sugar if needed. As always, I used food colouring paste. It's so vibrant and concentrated, a little bit goes a long way. I always recommend this over gels and liquid colouring for this reason. Once I got the colour the shade I wanted, I put the buttercream into a container and placed in the freezer. Once the cakes were ready, I left to cool thoroughly on the cooling rack. Then I wrapped the cakes in baking parchment for extra protection from freezer burn before placing them in a round plastic container to go in the freezer. Fast forward one month. The night before assembling the cake, I took the cake and buttercream out of the freezer to defrost. After defrosting, my first job was to make sure all the cakes were level and equal sizes. To assemble, on a cake board I used some strawberry jam to glue down the first layer of cake. After sandwiching the first three layers of cake together, I decided it was big enough for the amount of guests we were having, so I didn't use the fourth layer. For the frosting, I began with a crumb coat. This is a very important, yet often overlooked, stage. The crumb coat seals in the cake crumbs, leaving you with a good solid crumb-free base to work with, stopping any crumbs during in the overall look of the finished cake. Simply cover the entire cake in a thin layer of frosting, then leave to freeze for 10 minutes or until firm. Also, don't forget to clean up your cake board before the frosting sets. I put the rest of the buttercream into a piping bag. It's been ages since I'd done any piping, so it took me a while to get in the rhythm of piping the swirls. For the top of the cake, I needed a smooth surface to work with, so I used a knife to make some gentle swirls. For the Lego, originally I was going to use the sugar paste blocks I purchased online to make a number 7 on the top of the cake, but after trying it out, decided it didn't look very good, so ended up dotting the blocks around on top instead.
And that is how I made the Lego cake. Thanks for watching.